Hello, hey, and welcome to this episode of Rushed Vibes. I am your host, Jessica Rushed Vibes Rushing, accompanied by David Rushed Vibes Rushing, and we are here to vibe with our tribe. What up? How's it going? It's going. Yeah. It's going. It's going. It's going. It's going. You know, I know you've been really concerned. And I know there's one thing that's been burning a hole in your mind for the last few days. I already know that, that this you just, is not that you just that you really just want to get the answer to. I already know this is not mm-hmm. something I So I want to reassure you. And I want to oh, let you know. Absolutely, I absolutely know for it. And I want to let you know that Mitch McConnell's doctors have given him a clean bill of health. There's absolutely nothing wrong with him. Because his doctors are part of the RICO in Georgia. <laughs> so nothing for us to be concerned about. The fact that he just left us <laughs> in the middle of responding to a question. Like he just left Earth. He's a bot. And went somewhere. And um, isn't it wasn't there like a conspiracy that celebrities were like being reset a while ago? There's there's like these these videos that are circulating, I think, on like Facebook and Instagram of celebrities like in interviews or talking where they just go like quiet. And then they come back and they're, they've been saying that they've been reset, like they're being reset in in the middle of it um, or that they're possessed or something like that. Well, that would give credence to the simulation theory. What's the simulation theory? You know about the simulation theory? That life is just like one big computer and somebody's like. <clears throat> so we're just contr- gl- like, we're just glitching. It's like Truman Show. <laughs> you ever heard? You really haven't heard about simulation? No. I had, um, this is like three weeks in a row. I've, met, I've name dropped him, but <clears throat> I was talking to cousin Lamont about this at the last smoke night. And he was saying he's not really a big fan of simulation theory because it's it's very um simulating well it's just kind of narcissistic to think that somebody is we're so important yeah. that like somebody's using us to entertain them through. entertain themselves and I, I don't know basically have their own life <clears throat> their own life like sims going on but um yeah, but it would lead to credence if people are actually like resetting <laughs> I don't know what that would look like. Just like, well, I guess what Mitch McConnell did. Um, I mean, I don't know what medical professionals checked him out, but mm-hmm. I just feel like there's something wrong here. That's not normal behavior. It's not and what, he did it twice. It's not what the doctor if, said. If Biden had done that, they would, they would, dem- they would storm the Capitol. Yeah, you remember when he was reading off his teleprompter and he said, repeat the line. <laughs> He was just saving himself the trouble. That was no funny. teleprompters are confusing. Yeah, if you old and slow. He's not old and slow. He's not. He's slower than he than he was. Slower than they were. Look at you. I'm not slower than I was. I only get better with time. I don't know what you're talking about, girl. Okay. Hair longer. Okay. Yeah. We'll let you have that one. Because it's but true. I, you didn't have to waste the first. Well, I just know that it's. Minutes. I know. I know. I, and I know. I know you were. Not I know you were. Either. I know you were concerned. I am. I'm usually a very loving-hearted person. I could not care less about his health report from his the United senator. States senator. Not from my state. <laughs> So what was um what have you been up to? I've been working. I'm not talking about that, and you know what I'm talking about. I where you been? I was in Jamaica. You spilled it last episode. You're like, she's going to Jamaica. I said on Rush Vibes? Yes, you did. As opposed to what other show? When did I say you were going? I just said you were going out of town. 
No, I'm pretty sure you said I'm going. You to don't know that I actually said. I'm, I, I think. I think if we run the tape back, I don't. I didn't. That's I said you were leaving. Because I, I said you were leaving. I, I said. Thinking say. like, dang, what if I didn't want people to know where I was going? No, because I tried to get it out of you initially. I said, where are you going? You're like, I'm going on a trip. So I was like, okay, she doesn't want to name drop it. I don't know that I actually said Jamaica. Okay, maybe I didn't want people to know I was going. No, I'm pretty sure you said Jamaica, but I'll we'll go back, back and watch the episode. We'll run it back. Um, yeah, I just got back from a Labor Day weekend girls trip to Jamaica. Uh, with two of my local girlfriends and then my baby cousin from New York. Esquire. Esquire. Our lawyer on retainer. How was it? It was great. It was a great time. It was a lot of fun. Um, no offense to the Jamaicans out there. I don't know that I'd go, go back, back to Jamaica. Um, it just, at least... I wouldn't go back to Montego Bay. Um, I say that and then I'll probably be back in Montego Bay in like six yeah. months. But it, it, I'm as much as I like to vacation and see new places. I also like to learn about new places. Mm. Um, and I just felt like the city was too tourism dependent. So there wasn't a lot of like, independent local culture at least that i was exposed to on this trip now i also didn't do like ahead of time due diligence research um but it was very it was very tourist first time? yeah it was the first time in jamaica um so i just didn't do a lot of research ahead of time but that was it like i i like learning historical things like when we went to saint lucia like neptune like Filled us with. Yeah, we name dropping Neptune. Like Neptune that. was our our driver in Saint Lucia, and he was amazing. He was fantastic. And he he gave us so much knowledge just about like the history of the island and its transition from France to England and back to France and wars and independence. So I left Saint Lucia, Saint Lucian. Um, Honorary Saint Lucian. Yeah. Okay. He even said, "Remember, he was like you could," because I was like, you know. We eat this in Ghana. We have this in Ghana. Like he would name drop a fruit or or, or a vegetable or root or I'd be like, oh yeah, my parents eat that. I eat that. I eat that. He's like, oh, you could live here. I was like, yeah. Um. So I just really enjoyed. I really enjoyed. Technically, anybody could live anywhere. I mean, yeah, but I mean, I could live there as a local, eating the local food, not Western food. So, um. So yeah, I think I think, and again, this is only what the. Th the second Carib third Caribbean island I've been to, um, second that I've really infiltrated. And it just kind of felt like it was too tourism dependent. So, um, but again, I still haven't been to Ocho Rios. I haven't been to um, Negro. I probably would not go to Kingston, uh, but, uh, and maybe that's where like the foundational history of those islands, of the islands are, um, or the island is, excuse me. Mm. But, um, other than that, I mean, it was really hot. I I kind of broke my golden rule of not going to the Caribbean during summer because it's just it's just uncomfortably hot, um, and we already live in uncomfortable heat. So to like pay this is true pay to go to more heat, it's not reasonable. I'm usually like a October on October to maybe early February. That's um, that's the time of year that I don't mind being in the Caribbean, but um, but yeah, it was a fun time. Kind of subconsciously joined this quest for oxtail, and I will say I did have an oxtail plate that was amazing. Um, it was at like three thirty in the morning at this little. It was honestly like just imagine like a whole street, a block that's just vendors with like late night food. Like they don't, it doesn't open until 11. So we went there and I got an oxtail plate and I devoured the entire thing. And it was amazing. Um, they have any oxtail sliders? Huh? They have any oxtail sliders? No, it was just straight oxtail in browning over rice. And cabbage. Somebody, else, somebody out there, somebody out there has some oxtail, oxtail sliders. It's at, don't disrespect. They have some sliders. Sliders, pizza, Phillies. That's too much. And then the resort we stayed in Sunday, they also had oxtail, and the line was really long. Fortunately, we got, we got that. We were headed out 
But we got there and saw the oxtail and got a plate and had to like scarf it down in the lobby because our ride was waiting for us. Um, but yeah, it was fun. Did one of the river rafting um, excursions and did the limestone massage, um, but just did it on my legs. And then had a lot of coconut water, which was great. If you are in the Caribbean, get yourself a cold coconut and drink the water change your life um and keep you hydrated it will keep you hydrated better than water uh like i was lagging and i had a drink a coconut and i was like all right let's do this like i was ready i felt recharged i was like super mario brothers like i felt myself like come back to life so um it's unfortunate that we don't have coconuts uh here like fresh coconuts to enjoy um what else I mean, it was just a good trip. It's I always enjoy, you know, getting away, seeing a new place. Um, I'm disappointed because they don't stamp your passport in Jamaica. Mm. So I was like. So it's like you haven't really been. I didn't go. So now I still need to get three stamps of my passport. Mm. My annual three stamps. Like, I'm really, really hurt about that. It's terrible. Um, like, they had one job. Stamp the passport. Stamp the passport. You just going to let miscellaneous people into your country without stamping them? So. It's wild. It is. They're reckless. But um, yeah, other than that, it was a it was a good time. Um, went to a couple nightclubs. Was in the streets. Went to like Montego Bay, Montego Bay, like downtown Montego Bay. Um, strolled around, looked like straight tourist. Um, but yeah, so that's what I've been up to. And they came back. Came back. One piece. One piece, baby. No, uh, no flight issues. No, Jess and I were talking about it. This has probably been the smoothest trip I've ever been on. Like no went issues. Down, went down uh, after the hurricane came through. Flew out after the hurricane. Yeah, missed the hurricane. Missed I don't even think it touched. Um, I don't think it touched. Uh, no, but it was it was on the east coast. Mm -hmm. Late in the week. I wasn't too concerned about it because. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over here researching I know, hurricane I, patterns and the history of because I know that like, when, it, like, when it comes to flights, not worried about it. They can they can fly around. Yeah, storm. They, can they can fly above storms. So I was I like everybody else was concerned about it, but me. I was like, we gonna we going to Jamaica. So um, right. we did do that. Uh, yeah, the flight there smooth. The flight back smooth. All the travel in between, smooth. So I'm very thankful. But I like committed this trip into prayer. I spent like a month up beforehand praying over this trip. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, let's see if that worked out for you. It did. Yeah. So I got to be just praying all the time. Yeah, you know, it's funny because whenever Jessica and I travel, usually there's some sort of issue. Like we've had. Um, we've missed flights. We've missed flights. Because we were once somebody wanted to record a podcast. It was a great episode. We missed flights because we were pregnant. <laughs> she was pregnant, and we couldn't run. Couldn't couldn't run and couldn't miss the connection. Um, we had, had problems with the with the plane. Got stuck on an island the next day. On an island. But you know, as many things that we've run into, um, there is one inconvenience that we haven't experienced while flying. Um, and that's having to turn around because that was actually is, a really good transition. Somebody had diarrhea on the plane, which is what happened um, this week, right? On an international flight from Atlanta, Delta flying from Atlanta to Barcelona. They had to turn the plane around they because did. of a biohazard issue. Yeah. Um, Pretty sure one of your kids is up, but uh, I think so. I was just coughing. There was diarrhea, quote unquote, all through the plane, and a lot of people on Twitter were like, "Oh, okay, well, you guys are like, you know, exactly. exaggerating, you know, somebody, you know, why, you know." But again, people were exaggerating. Why would they turn the plane around? Right? Did you see the video that someone? Okay. Let's get to that part. Somebody actually posted video where you can see. Diarrhea just running down the aisle of the plane. Yeah. So, 
normally I would have something here, right? Like a quip or I really don't. It's um I as I know I've heard that they're, you know, because COVID's back, right? Um it went in hibernation. It never went away. It went in hibernation and now it's back because it's getting ready it's to be not a bear. fall time. Um apparently there's a new strain going around and it can hit it can have effects on your gastro all that oh, area. Really? Cause I've been having a lot of stomach aches. Allegedly. Um so I don't know if this person is dealing with the bout of the new COVID. There wasn't a whole lot of information released. Uh, rightfully so. I mean, it's probably embarrassing enough to, mm -hmm. you know, have that issue on a plane. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I can't imagine having that happen to me uh, or just being on a plane and you just see mm. like Dookie just. How do you get your suitcases? Like, how do you clear the plane? It took them eight hours to, to clean the plane. What kind of diarrhea was that? I don't know. <laughs> and what was the person like? Were they, they? I guess they were trying to sprint for the bathroom. I don't know. Maybe maybe the flight was you know still ascending. You know because you can't go to well, once you take off. You got to be able so high before you can mm -hmm. you know unbuckle your seatbelt and go to the go to the bathroom. I, I don't know what happened. Yeah, so that stuff was all it's all all up and down the aisle. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I feel I feel for everybody involved, every single person. Because I have secondhand embarrassment, so like I naturally like put myself like, what if that was me? Like, what would I do? Um, because it's it's they had to turn the plane around. The plane was already in the air, yeah. so to have to like you have to sit in it. No pun. <laughs> you have to sit in it as well as everyone else has to sit in it. Yeah, it's in the dookie and smell it. Fresh dookie, lucid. Mm. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know what. To, what do you do? What does the airline do? Who's at fault? I mean, you know. I wonder. What, fault, I wonder what like, they ate. I wonder what, what caused it. Say, say it's not this new strand of COVID. It could just be like like travel anxiety. Probably bad, probably bad Mexican. It could be travel anxiety. Is that a mosquito? Uh, probably. I can't afford any more mosquito bites. Yeah, it could be you traveling. You survived the Jamaican mosquitoes. You'd be a little North Carolina mosquito aren't you? You probably got a call from the homies. Um, yeah, I mean, it could be travel anxiety. It could be... I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure this is still a developing story. I'm sure a lot of people are mad. I don't want to follow it no more. I don't either. I saw the video by accident. It just happened to like circulate on my timeline. And I was like, what are they showing? And then I was like, oh. It's dookie. Yeah, I I feel I feel really bad. Yeah, uh, yeah. I I and I try to think like, what if I was on a flight like that? What would happen? Because you've been on a flight when someone like someone passes gas and it's like <coughs> it doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, I I've been on uh, planes where you know obviously you know someone's always gonna pass gas because mm -hmm. you know you can't really track it right and you don't really know and you're in the air and like compression and stuff um but i've been on planes where people they bring food and it's like stink yeah like stink, stinky salads fish um you know you, you just get through it because you just not really i mean what are you gonna do call call the flight attendant hey man can you don't to put their food away i mean you could it's but um disruption be yeah, a boo boo just rolling down the that's rolling down the aisle that's that's just so embarrassing for such a long time too. Cause like airports are big. So even when you return back and you deplane, if they let you off the plane first, cause you're the one, you're the biohazard. I mean, you still have to walk by hundreds of people to get off this plane. Yeah. Um, everybody's going to know it's you. Like, you're gonna, so you're, you're gonna see, like you're going to circulate online. You're going to see the dookie stains. In yeah. Your that. Too. That man is not real. That's like, you know, she's an influencer now. Really? She's like launched this whole website and this whole thing. There's like a conspiracy that whoever TMZ spoke to is not her. So and she's that, not real. And that she saw aliens, so they like took her, and they sent a doppelganger. I guess someone did facial recognition, and said it's not the same person. 
because she saw something. Okay, so that's, that's actually, I'm actually really intrigued she by this. Something she wasn't supposed to see, <laughs> but, but they can't let the story just like, it won't just die. So they sent a doc. Didn't I tell you one of the jokes on Twitter was when she said that mother back there is not real. Someone said the alien back there disguised as a human was probably shitting bricks because somebody was, somebody was onto it. Well, there you go. There you go. It, it all aligns. But yeah, who told Was it Georgia? Somebody told me that they did like side by side facial recognition and they rec- they realized that it's not the same woman, but they've sent another woman to it's, to distract us. I feel like, I feel like it's her. Her I hair is just different. I don't know. I, I feel like it's, it looked it looked like her. I don't know. I think I think the government might be trying to cover up something. No, Why no. they have an alien on a commercial flight, I don't know. I can't speak to it, but yeah. Maybe the alien wasn't supposed to be there. They're trying to escape and go to Barcelona. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they're supposed to be rendezvousing with some one of their boys over there or something. I don't know, man. That's the most, you know, with all this UFO talk going on here lately, um, I don't, I don't discredit anything. In my mind, I don't need everything, anything is possible. So, I mean, she may have seen something she wasn't supposed to see. And now she's gone. I don't know. <laughs> but what, what damage could she have caused? She, you saw how she told everybody on a plane that that person, that thing And nobody wasn't believed real. her. Everybody looked she, when she said, when she pointed, everybody looked, but nobody believed her because there was nobody back there. Got, she seemed like the type that would have gotten enough clout. I don't, I believe that she's been taken by the government to keep the secrets of whatever she saw because she knew something was not real and for some reason she conveniently can't talk about it what what couldn't you why can't you talk about something that you saw that wasn't real Um. did she get arrested or detained or anything no she just they just let her off the plane that's interesting I'm mean, gonna see now. I'm, when, we see? Done, when we get done, when we get done recording, go I'm gonna dig. go, I'm gonna go, go down the rabbit hole. She says, and now after I heard that, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna be so These upset. Valid points. So upset when I'm up till three a.m. because you and Georgia save whatever research and we'll regroup. We'll, 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 we'll I think we already have a group chat. We'll dive into hey. the group chat. Anyways, <laughs> moving on. Um. Been a busy week with news. I like a lot of big headline, worldwide mm-hmm. breaking news. There's been a lot of stuff going on. Mm-hmm. Been, yeah, you're right. It's been active. Been active week. You know, things just you know, keep popping up on my social media feed. And um, one one thing that stood out to me was. Oprah and your boy, The Rock. He's my boy? Dwayne Johnson. Yeah, he's your boy. What's your guy, right? No, Jason Momoa is my boy. Oh, sorry. The wrong Islander. Um, Have come under fire from the common common class. (laughs) The common common folk class. Because they... uh, Started a basically a relief fund mm-hmm. for the people of Maui, mm-hmm. and they each put up five million oh. to get the fund started. So a ten million dollar fund. Okay, start building infrastructures. So they 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 were um, intentional about being able to for someone for someone to be able to donate and the money go directly to a an individual in Maui, not an organization who would then you know. They want to take out all the middlemen, set up the infrastructure, set up the website. Mm-hmm. You donate. It goes right to a family, to a person. What's the issue? Awesome. Awesome gesture, right? Fantastic. People always want celebrities to, you know, to donate. Things like these things like this happen. Like, Who's going to put in? So Oprah and the Rock, they put in. And then they asked people to also donate to help grow the fund. People weren't having it. They're like, Oprah, you worth the billy. 
Rock, you won you the most richest guy in Hollywood. Is he? Yeah. At, one, at least at one point he was. He may not be now because I'm pretty sure he's up there. Mm. Um, people are saying $5 million is like this much of your overall wealth. Mm-hmm. Like you could put in more. Why are you asking me? I'm living paycheck to paycheck. Mm-hmm. Oprah's Instagram feed was not pleasant. Rox was a little more favorable, but there were still people upset at him, too. Now, there's also a conspiracy theory, since we're talking about these things, that uh, since Oprah owned so much land in Maui, that uh, she somehow... Was, They're not going to ask a black woman to give up her land. No, she somehow was a part of the fire starting so that she could go buy more land. Because she already owns like eight, like something ridiculous, like 870 acres. Um, $10 million is not little money. I, I'm, I'm torn because yes, I recognize that these people are very wealthy and they could legit probably write a check that would not even hurt them. That, that could be a tax that would be a tax write off. Um, that could give everybody who was affected by these fires, a hundred thousand, five hundred thousand, maybe even a million dollars, uh, and it would be nothing between the two of them. Um, we do need to recognize that there is a writer strike in Hollywood, so The Rock is technically unemployed. Uh, well, and he also donated to one of the one of the union funds to keep people afloat during, like, for this. Yeah, he did like like last week. Okay, so I mean, it's it's one of those things that you can't. It's easy to say someone is wealthy and in a perfect God loving world, the wealthy would take care of everyone else. Yes, I'm wealthy. I can afford to. This person is in trouble here. I will give of my wealth. But we are. It's also not okay to count someone's dollars. And, you know, yeah, someone, everything is in perspective. Like, yes, they're wealthy, but they've bought according to their means and their means is wealthy. Oprah has what? Almost a thousand acres who I, I know she has a house. I believe it's in Calabasas or it's somewhere in, in Los Angeles. Uh, she probably still has her home in Los Angeles. I mean, in Chicago, she likely still has like has a house in New York. She might have some. I think she has some places internationally, like in some some of the Caribbean islands, and I want to say somewhere in Europe. So, I mean, these places are probably not cheap to maintain because just because you're not there doesn't mean someone's not maintaining it. Like you're having a staff and all of that. So, you know, when we think you know live to your means, you know, we think of middle class people who you have your house, you have your car note, blah, 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 live accordingly, cut your coat according to your size. Well, I mean, it's just the mat the, the fact of the matter is their their size is bigger. So their coat is bigger, but they still have expenses. So I don't like this idea that we should say Oprah can afford to take care of the entire island of Maui. So she's wrong for only contributing five million dollars because who knows how long it would have taken for the good people of america to raise five million dollars for this cause um so i'm not i'm not gonna sit here and say they should contribute more because five million dollars is a lot of money from one person uh so but I also don't agree that we should be counting people's pockets, whether they're wealthy or not. I Again, I don't discredit the fact that both of them combined could put together and they could have done 10 million a piece, $20 million probably could have been enough that you could break up money. But I think you've mentioned it before when it comes to Be- when it came to Bezos and something he did. It's just not, I wouldn't want someone to expect me based off of how they perceive my life to assume, well, Jessica's got it. So she should be able to pay for it. She should be able to do more, give more. Like I'm giving according to what has been put on my heart, what I can afford, whatever. So I personally think 5 million is good. Could they have done 10 a piece? Probably. 
keeping in mind that The Rock is unemployed. The Rock does have children. I mean, there, again, there's a writer strike. You know, Oprah is probably losing some of her business because she is in production. She has a network and all of that stuff. So, you know, I think people don't take that into account. Um, she has a magazine. She, I think she's doing things. So, yes, I believe they c probably could have done more, but I also believe it's not my place, nor is it anyone else's play place to say, you should be contributing more. You should not be asking others because they put down five million. A lot of us cannot put down five million. So who are we to have judgments toward the people who are putting down five million? Isn't that more than what the government's offering? It wasn't it only like seven hundred per family or something like that. So one time, I don't know that it it would be less than what the government offered, but I'm just saying I, I I'm I'm just at this place where it's just you know my philosophy is you know you be blessed so that you can be a blessing, and if that is the because at the same time, she's not obligated to do anything. Her ish is fine. She's good. She could easily just be like sorrows and prayers. I stand with the people of Maui. Put up a Hawaiian flag on her Facebook profile picture. Call it a day. $5 million is not chump change. $5 million can do something to improve the infrastructure of the place. So I think rather than taking making an effort to put them down and make them seem like they are selfish or wrong, let's appreciate the fact that they had the thought to do that because at the end of the day, they didn't have to. They probably, if they didn't do it, they would have been criticized. Now they're doing it, they're being criticized. So it's damned if they do, damned if they don't. But why are we just coming for Oprah and The Rock? I'm sure there are other plenty. There are plenty of other wealthy people who live on the island. There was some rocker um, from one of those like big '70s rock and roll bands who lives on the island. I don't know. Maybe he has contributed something. But I heard he lived up there for like 20 years, 20, 30 years. He's been up there. They know him at some famous local restaurant. Like, is someone knocking on his door? Be like, how much you dropping? Get into this one. Yeah, because I mean. <laughs> It, it, it's just not right to demand. I don't know that there's going to be, there would be a number that people would be like, that is the perfect amount for Oprah and the rock to give in this circumstance. They could have done $7 million a piece. And someone would be like, well, why didn't you just round up to $10 million a piece and make it 20? Like the unfortunate thing about our, our society is that it's no one's responsibility to take care of another person that they are not like the guardian of. Oprah and The Rock are, do not owe anyone anything. I mean, The Rock is probably, I think he's, he is Hawaiian. He's Samoan, half Samoan. Um, he doesn't owe any, like, he, those are his people, so he's doing that out of the goodness of his heart. If Oprah didn't live in Maui, I doubt she'd be dropping a check. So I'm just over, like, this, this belief that, like, we live in a capitalist society. I'm over this belief that because like the, our society is not going to change that the rich are going to take care of the poor. Like that's, that's just not it. So, I mean, be thankful that they even had the heart to do it. Well, one, would add, one would argue that they already are seeing as they're taxed at a much higher rate than everybody else. Who, the rich or the poor? Rich. Yeah, but they write them, they write all that off. This 5 million is, is for each of them is written off. You know, you could write off whatever you donated to. And I will. I went to Goodwill today. And I, he said, you want to receive? I said, yes, sir. You went to the crisis place. Yeah, I just, I didn't have the time window. And Goodwill's on the way to Savi school. So mm -hmm. we dropped it off after school. But the last three donations I've done went to crisis assistance. And they got some good stuff. You need some couches over there. Hmm? You need some couches over there. Tell them to come Do pick them up. Do they take furniture? I hope so. Somebody need to take them so I get my get my money back every month. Mm -hmm. Storage unit. Um. So real quick, I don't I don't want to spend too much time on this because uh, you said enough for the both of us. Um. I think one of the biggest. Uh. 
detriments to this country is the lack of the most basic of financial literacy, basics, financial literacy, because time and time again, people seem to think because someone is worth a billion that they have a billion liquid. It's, it's not, it's not how it works. Mm -mm. Um, and while yes, if you are worth a billion, you have access to get loans and at a much cheaper, cheaper rate, you can borrow against assets, things like that. Yes. But not every billionaire can just get liquid money like that, where they can just donate it. Um, some can, depending upon how they how they've amassed their wealth. Uh, more times than not, they probably haven't, or it's somewhere in the middle where they they've got some liquid stuff and then they've got some things that are that are in assets. So I kind of cringe when people say, "Oh, well, you got a billion? I'm like, well, maybe not. Like, I think it was Chris Rock. I think it was Chris Rock who made the joke, like. <laughs> Like if Bill Gates woke up with Oprah's money, he'd probably like jump off a bridge and they're both billionaires, but one is significantly more than the other. So like, yeah, Oprah got money probably more than I'll ever, I'll ever know. But when it comes to getting, putting liquid money into a, a fund, um, when time is of the essence, you know, it, it may not, it's, it's not as easy as, as people would think. Um, and I agree. Like, I don't think it's, shouldn't be counting other people's pockets, even though, you know, a lot of stuff is public, you know, people's net worth and things like that. I don't know that it's necessarily fair to demand that someone give more money that they've are more than what they've already you know, volunteer to put forth because you're right. 5 million is still a lot of money, even mm -hmm. if it's coming from someone who's worth, you know, X, X amount of billions of dollars. But at the same time, like my company, we talked about it last week. My company may announce layoffs. Well, it happened today. Like people were let go. Um, people who have known, since I've been there, which is almost 10 years, mm -hmm. uh, people who I've met, you know, halfway through my career, but it had gotten really close with, uh, and people who I was just, um, acquainted with, but still, you know, good people let go. Um, and we're in a time where not only are like individuals feeling the weight of high interest rates, right. Um, companies are too, like, our CEO is always saying like, yeah, we got a lot of debt and we got to pay it back at like this astronomical rate. And, you know, you got to cut costs. So I say all that to say like, we're in a time where people are really, truly like barely making it. Mm -hmm. um, the average person doesn't necessarily have a lot of discretionary cash to throw around. So to hear someone who's living in a totally different reality than I am because of how much money they're worth. Ask me for money when they've got 10 times more than I do. I can understand that people might be a little upset about that. Mm. Um, but at the same time, you don't have to, you know, if you can't don't mm. look out for yourself. Uh, but that doesn't mean that Oprah and the rock should feel ashamed of themselves because they, only put up 10 million combined and now they're asking other people to, to do it. Um, you know, like I said, the rock already donated to the, to one of the other unions, um, in Hollywood to help keep people afloat. So the, the thing is we only know what someone tells us, right? So the Oprah and the rock told us about this Maui fund, but we don't know what else they're contributing to. Mm -hmm. We don't know what else they've donated to. Because a lot of people make moves that you don't see. Yeah. So. And there she, knowing Oprah, 
and I say this sparingly, but I've, in terms of you like, in ter- I mean, I've watched her my whole life. I know, oh. I'm, I'm saying no. No, I thought, you just, I, I thought you might know Oprah and I'm like, <laughs> why haven't we been introduced? No. Um, I'm just saying from, you know, someone who's watched her show, like my mom was a big fan of Oprah. I've seen her in movies and, oh. and all of that. Um, she is a giver. Like she, she, that's what she does. I mean, everybody knows you get a car, you get a car. Like Oprah has a heart for giving. So did everybody get a car? They did. And then people actually got mad because they taxed them on the car. So then Oprah went back and gave everybody a check to cover like the taxes on that car. And that got taxed too. Likely, but um, <laughs> you can't beat the tax man. But I think, like, whatever the tax property, man undefeated, like, whatever the property taxes were on those Volkswagens, um, people were like, Yeah, this is great, you gave us cars, but now we got we owe. I mean, it's once a year, it is. But she ended up like she did right by them and she wrote them checks. She opened up a school in South Africa, granted, that school had issues, um, but she you she she has a heart for taking care of people is something that i i is the point that i'm trying to make allegedly. so allegedly so to your point yeah there's five millions that we five million that we see up front but we don't know maybe she's allowing people to stay on some of her acreage like me like you, you don't know in the background like you don't know everything everyone's doing you don't know what people are doing under pseudonames um because they don't want the attention so it's just like let's just get these people through this horrible situation that they're in trying to figure out, you know, where they're going to rest their heads, what's going to happen to their property and all of that, as opposed to like, there's a crisis that we need to solve. And right now someone has provided two people have provided $5 million solutions each. So yeah, I'm just not, I'm not a fan of it. I think, you know, God bless them for having the heart to do that. And I'm sure more people will join. I don't think it's like match us, but it's like, hey, we've started the foundation of this fund. If you're willing to contribute, contribute. They started the infrastructure. They got the infrastructure. If you're not willing to contribute, keep scrolling. Like, Just give you thoughts and prayers. Because there are plenty of people who commented that we could easily go back and be like, so did you, have you contributed to Maui? You're over here criticizing the person who dropped 5 million, but what have you given to Maui? Thoughts and prayers. It's really easy to sit on the keyboard. Thoughts and prayers is free. No argument here. All right. Um, Speaking of social media. You're doing it. I am. You're transitioning. I am transitioning. So, you know, we just kind of touched on the the negative part of social media. Right, right. But, and we've talked about this in the past in terms of how, like, the social bureau of investigation, the SBI, um, when they are tasked with something, Mm -hmm. they they go hard and they make it, they make it happen. So I don't know if you heard about the Tinder shoe gate. Okay. Peep this. So dude matches with this girl on either Tinder or Hitch, Hinge, Hinge. Um, So she gets on TikTok and does this epic thing. Matches with her. They don't, they, they, they hook up at her place. He leaves. They hook up that night. They wake up, hook up in that morning. He leaves. She realizes that an expensive pair of shoes of hers are missing. They're like fourteen hundred dollars shoes. They're missing. The shoes cost fourteen hundred dollars. Not my shoes. My shoes be coming from the sale rack. So she was like, "Hmm." So she goes to message him. His number's out of her phone. He's blocked her on the app. Turns out, I guess the morning before, he was like, "I want to play a Spotify playlist for you, but my Spotify is not working. Let me see your phone." And that's when she suspects that he deleted all of his contact information out of her phone. So now she can't reach him. So she gets on social media. I think she gets on TikTok, and she's like, "Yo, this dude has blocked me. I can't reach him. My fourteen, my expensive shoes are missing." But she had pictures of him, so it was like, "Help me find him." I'm going to make this real short. So she ends up like social media, you know, the social bureau of investigation. They, they, they jump in. She finds like people around him, his sister, like friends, whatever messages them. He reaches out to her and he's like, yo, can you take this like down? Like, if she finally is able to reach him, um, like 
and he's like, can you take this down? She's like, do you have my shoes? He's like, no, of course I don't have your shoes, but I'll, j I'll just give you the money. So she was like, innocent people don't just offer to give you money for $1,400 shoes. Turns out dude has a girlfriend. Mm. So she gets, she infiltrates his social media. He stole her shoes, gave them his girlfriend. to his girlfriend and is asking her to take down this post that's now going viral mm. because the SBI is on it. Mm. So I believe she eventually gets the shoes back. Right. But it's like, this is wild. This is why you need social media because you can track this down. But this is like, this dude has a whole girlfriend, is on a dating app, matched with someone, went on a date, hooked up with him twice, and then stole her shoes. And gave those shoes to his girlfriend. $1,400 shoes. $1,400 shoes. I just... I, He's got to be from Utah. <laughs> I will say that's. um, Yeah, that's pretty wild, isn't it? Yeah. I'll find the TikTok for you to watch. Um, Georgia put me on this. Like, of, of course she did. <sighs> the young people, of course, she the did. young people be be knowing. Look, man. That's some wild. Like, I don't know how y'all do it, man. No, dating is just such a. And I such an extreme sport. I think these you had days. more dating experience than I did. I did not, and I don't know what what the, the stories I hear, the experiences people are having. The streets are a dangerous place. I don't know how these people, how you people navigate them. Like I don't envy you in any way, shape, or form. So, you know, speaking of streets. You know, there's, depending upon where you are in the world, you know, streets could be dirt. Mm -hmm. You can have a dirt road. Gravel. Gravel. You could have gravel. A gravel road. You could have a pavement road. Or you could have a road of bricks. <laughs> um... Which kind of brings us to a social media story that I'm really conflicted about. Homie. I am I am very I need to go to my prayer closet on this. I'm very, very conflicted. Yeah. About mm -hmm. this brick girl story that uh went viral on social media, I think over the weekend. Mm-hmm. So there's this Smalian girl somalia somalia girl uh woman excuse somali. me somali woman excuse me who uh is in houston i think oh, is that where it takes all it, this it went to some spot in houston texas mm -hmm. and um was recorded doing i guess maybe she's an influencer uh, i think she's like influencer aspiring, adjacent adjacent aspiring um and was seen that night she smacked some dude, barely smacked him, but smacked some dude for whatever reason, I don't know, and then like walks away and then starts twerking and then, <laughs> and then the feed cuts out. Um she's had some 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 older videos where she's talking about um before feminism, there was just lesbianism, um, I guess meaning that we don't really need men. Uh, black men and, spe and specifically, I oh, believe. I missed that part. Um, so just very interesting mm -hmm. feed. Went through a little bit of it. Um, but later that night, there's another video. where she rec she's rec So the slapping of the white guy was the same night? I believe so, because she's wearing the same outfit. Oh. And the side of her face isn't <laughs> hasn't expanded yet. So later on she records a video where apparently some dude had asked her for a number she said no and i guess he got offended picked up a brick hit her with it so when she's recording you can kind of see her face like swelling up literally mm -hmm. like i don't know if you've seen the like if you know who uh, sheen rockman is but he had fought um i think it was vander holyfield back in the day holyfield like was pounding him pounding him, pounding him and like he grew another forehead <laughs> it was like how much swelling there was so that's like her 
face was just like expanding. Um, apparently there were other men around who did nothing. Hmm. This guy hit with the brake out and the car, car drove off. So then she recorded another video later, I guess at the hospital where her face was, had continued to swell mm -hmm. and was basically trashing the men who were standing around and didn't do anything. It's like, how are you going to be a man and you're going to stand around and let a woman get assaulted mm -hmm. hit with a brick? Now, I've seen two videos, uh, one with two men in it, one of a singular man who I think the was the one you saw because you were telling me about it, who mm. said that she was there, but she was kind of antagonizing. She was had even maybe asked to be hit. I think I, I think the guy had uh, had said, um, and I think the other two men kind of corroborated that. <clears throat> and so, of course, social media being social media, people were finding like some of her old videos, and I guess because maybe she has some disagreement. Yeah, SBI, I guess, because she has some disagreeable uh, points of view on certain things that that meant she <laughs> deserved to, the rationale is, is amazing, mm -hmm. sometimes astounding. I guess that meant she deserved to get hit with a brick. So I'm conflicted. Mm. Because it's not funny that mm. somebody I hit with a brick because mm -hmm. her face was like, I didn't believe it was real. It looked, it looked like animated. it looked. You seen that episode of Martin, where he 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 was black. That's how it looked, right? Um, and I <laughs> no, you laughing? I'm not. I'm not trying to be funny right now. I'm just saying. But that's how it looked to me. Like when I saw her face, I was like, "Damn, she looked like Martin." Um. So it's never okay. Mm -mm. You shouldn't be hitting women, period. Right? Um, I mean, there are very, there are very, be hitting people. There are very, very, very few instances where hitting a woman would be acceptable, right? Um, this is not one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, but I gotta tell you, something just doesn't seem right about it. Something seems off, and and of course, this people are trying to have the whole. You know, black men don't defend black women thing, but none of the men there were American born black men. So I was like, we're not really in this one. It's, it's like the mother cats. It's not really us. I'm just saying the the, the, the three men who, who were on video, they weren't really like, they weren't like me. All right. I'm just saying, um, because I would like to think, I know for my sake, Right. Like if there was a woman there who was being assaulted, well, assuming I'm seeing this happen. Right. Because I, I mean, I don't know if he just like hit her and then he like dip or if he like hit her and it was like, yeah, what's up? And then dip. like, I don't know how, how this happened. Um, but there's no way I would let I would let that happen. Um, because I wouldn't want I wouldn't want someone to just stand by if that were you because you go out, mm -hmm. you go out with your girlfriends. Um, I had my own incident. You had your week. own incident in, in Jamaica where a man could have, you know, could have tried to assault you because you turned him down. So and I would have assaulted me and I assaulted back. You're absolutely right. Um, could have further assaulted you. Mm -hmm. So I would have liked to think that somebody would defend you if in my absence, not necessarily because they know me or they know you but because it's wrong. Just, yeah. Principle. Um, So I'm just, this whole thing, I'm just, it's got me all, all sorts of conflicted. Yeah. And I don't really know how I feel about it. Um, but one thing it has confirmed for me, this is why I stay my ass at home. It is. That's why I don't, that's why I don't go out. It is safer to stay at home. All, all this kind of stuff happens at night. Yeah. When in, in the, or, or in the, in the, the or in the wee hours of the morning. When you're in the streets, there's stay my black. I'm, I'm married. I, I got three beautiful kids and boulevards. Stay my black ass at home. I get the new 2K that come out. I smoke a cigar on the porch. I don't have to go anywhere. Now I'll step out selectively, but bad stuff happened at night. Don't nothing happen. None, nothing. You get to a certain point at night. Nothing good happens. Good things can happen at night. 
in the moment they seem good like you knocking boots but then you wake up you out fourteen hundred dollar pair of shoes right <laughs> yeah that's all i'm saying that's all i'm saying okay i'm 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 very conflicted i've heard a lot of different things i've heard things from like the what's the kevin samuels of the world i've heard things from what are the kevin samuels of the world you know i like you and you actually touched on it that the men who spoke up were not um foundational black men yes yeah you didn't think i was up on that did you i did not know that that was a a, an acronym so i guess i'm not a foundational black so it's funny because no but it's funny um because it's it's your boy uh what's his name uh tariq you know what I'm talking about. The mm-hmm. guy who did the, that documentary you had me watch. He did it with Umar Johnson back in the day. I made you watch a documentary? Yeah, you had me watching some whack. You sure I wasn't watching some it? Some That's probably what it was. <laughs> I, did have, you, like, I did have a hotep moment. I was sorry. watching it. Uh, what's his name? Tariq. Oh. Nasheed. Why don't I remember that? You don't remember him? That's how brief my hotep was. But anyways, so he, so he, um, he, he, was, said, he, he was all over this. And he was saying uh, there, were, there were black women trying to say that foundational black fba men were around he's like but actually it wasn't it was non-fba men who were standing around watching this woman get assaulted had it been fba men we would have intervened and so people found out what's fba what's the a foundational foundationally black um american foundational black american okay black american so there were people foundational black american i am not what are our children there are foundational black americans but they're africans no they're, they're foundation. They're legitimate. I super my Americanness. Americanism supersedes. One <laughs> might argue that like, we're, Africanness supersedes your. It's not well. One, I don't necessarily mm-hmm. subscribe to all this. So when I said it wasn't black men like me, that was more tongue in cheek, because I know it's interesting when there's a blanket thrown over black men and when there's not. But that's for another day. But it was interesting because when Tariq was in. He was all over this and he was in the thread. He was using the acronym. And so people were like, am I the only one who doesn't know what FBA means? And so someone else, because the people were commenting, it means fulfillment by Amazon. <laughs> fulfillment by Amazon. And people were like, oh, thanks. Like I was, I was struggling trying to figure it out. I'm like, oh my Lord, they got people thinking Tariq in here talking about Amazon fulfillment, fulfillment by Amazon. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Where do we, where, where do we, how do we start? Yeah. Foundational I'm, black American. I'm very, I'm very torn yeah. at my core. When you boil this all down and you get to concentrate, absolutely no one should be hit in the face with a brick unless you are defending your life. And a brick is the like, only weapon. Like Craig Hidibo. Yes. And a brick is the only weapon that you have available to you. Mm-hmm. I think that, that, that should be a non-starter. Um, you know, I know you said like, there's very few reasons that, um, that a man has a reason to hit a woman. I think there should be very few reasons why a person should have reason to hit another person. Um, I don't think it needs to be gender selective. Um, I don't condone men hitting women, but I do believe like if you go step to someone, regardless of their gender, you need to be prepared for them to step back. Right. So that's, we'll put that out there. I am torn because I did see a clip of the video where she's in the street. She smacks, she slaps a white man Mm -hmm. in the face. She does go twerk. I was like, her butt is really big. It's all huge. Yeah. And I know, I know Somalis. That sounds massive. I know a lot of people from Somalia. Actually, her butt was big too. So they're Somalis. They're not Somalians. It might be interchangeable, but I know they refer to themselves as Somali. Okay. Um, at least the ones that I've known have referred to themselves as some. Oh, so you know some. Yeah, I had a real. Oh my gosh, I had a really good friend in high school who was um who was from Somalia. Um, I loved her. Oh my gosh, I loved her. She and I were like this. What's her name? Lucky. That's a dope name. It's a nice. Name. I loved. Okay. I loved Lucky. Continue. Um. So wait, she's not dead, is she? No, I. Oh, okay. oh you said. <laughs> you like, like, in North Carolina, okay. you know, our relationship just kind of disintegrated. So, um, disintegrated. I'm really, I'm really torn because regardless, like I've heard that she was taunting him. I don't know what she was saying. Like what your dick small, your mama ain't anything. Your daddy ain't nothing, blah, blah, blah. 
I didn't realize that there was a barrier to protection that if you are not an FBA woman, you no, 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 no. Are to be protected. That's not, that's not, that's not, that's not what he was saying. So I'm stopping you. The men were not FBA. The men were not. So they're putting, the, they're putting the onus on the men. So they're saying don't blame black men for not protecting a So this black. is where we're separating the diaspora. I'm just saying, this is what Tariq is saying. Do not blame black men for not interceding because there were not foundational black Americans mm -hmm. about. Amongst them. These were not foundational. So this these are not FBA men. I think this is where it gets complicated because, you know, you have to think, are these men Muslim? Um, the, you know, the Islamic religion has a, I'm just saying there are so many. It, well, I'm just, I'm just saying, I don't think it matters because if we're speaking, if we're, if we're speaking strictly of the viewpoint, these were not foundational foundation. black well, Americans. That's all I'm saying. That's all he's saying. If they're Muslim, because there are some people, there are some sects of the sect, sex s-e-c-t not sex um of the muslim faith of the, the 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 religion of islam where you know a woman the beating of a woman is not unorthodox is what I, i'm saying i get it i understand so, that but what so that might not necessarily be the fact that they are black but more the fact that they are of the islamic religious that's, base that's fine but from Tariq's standpoint he's just saying don't lump For, us in forget to reek no but what i'm saying is because in in certain but you're but your ex your religion supersedes color. you're trying to explain why they may or may not have have okay stepped in i'm saying i don't i'm i don't one this isn't me speaking for me three doesn't care he's just saying don't say we're them we're part of them that's not us is what he was saying so i get that religion could supersede and once you once you go that route, there could be a million different reasons why someone does or doesn't do something mm -hmm. in, a, in a particular given situation. Um, but don't look at it and say, oh, that's why we don't rock with black men, because well, according to these this, not, according to this, black man, these men were not filled by Amazon. Uh, I mean, I think <laughs> I, I haven't been in many scenarios like this. I would like to think that at least the. I would like to think that, again, I can only speak on, I can speak on Ghanaian and Nigerian men. I've spent, I spent time with both equally, not equally, but a majority. They would, they would step up. But again, I don't condone it, but a lot of, African cultures, I can say it in, in tree. I can't say I don't. I can't find the no, word. No, but there are women who in tree now. There can be women who are you know basa basa like busy, like someone who runs their mouth too much, and that's not someone that they would someone would necessarily risk their life for. Mm. And mm. and we have that in FBA. There are FBA women who will run their mouth and you'll be like, yo, she's always, and that's what the guy said. He's, she's a troublemaker. She was taunting him, blah, blah, blah. I, at, at the end of the day, no one should hit anyone with a brick. Now I'm not saying risk your life. Like I, I don't, and that's where that could have ended up. Someone step up and then they get hit with a brick. And now, you know, I'm out. I can't go to work. I'm, I got a concussion, blah, blah, blah. Not saying she deserved it, but it's so complicated because you're like, Yes, she deserved to be defended. I guess the stories are conflicting because she, you know, her videos made it seem like dude asked for her number. She said no. And he retaliated by hitting her, which a lot of women resonated with because you do have to do the whole excuse as to what, like there are some men who are just entitled that they feel like if they express interest in you, you're obligated to, you know, reciprocate that interest. Right. So unless right. you give them a reason not to, I married, I have a boyfriend, whatever you, you, you run the risk of, well, forget you. Like some, something's going to happen in return of the fact that you did not, you're not receptive to them. So there's that. But, there's also this this complexity of did she not deserve to be defended because 
she was reckless. I'll use the word reckless. I don't know. I can't say, I can't sit here as a human being and say, oh, she deserved to be hit in the face with a brick because she may have been taunting somebody. She may be, you know, known as a troublemaker, blah, 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 blah. So it, it's, it's this weird societal norm or un, this it's something that we as a black people not foundationally black american foundationally black african just black people need to figure out i think you know there's always going to be this back and forth about how black men are supposed to treat black women and how black women are supposed to treat black men and how we are either supposed to be submissive or not submissive and there, it's never going to end it's it's like the you gonna fix a plate at the cookout conversation it's not going for y'all hmm? it's not going to win for y'all i'm good but you're being blanketed with these men yeah because i would have done something no i'm not being blanketed for anything I, but then i'm also like myself i'm thinking if you happen to have been there and this woman is known for like being an antagonist being someone who is going to provoke blah 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 should my husband risk his life to protect someone and and be hurt you have three kids and a wife to come home to and be hurt by someone who is known by provoke being a prov provocative in 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 terms of I, i'm would you want somebody else who's who has the same statistics to help you in that similar situation i would and that's where it gets complicated because it will, it's, it's, it's like i know i wouldn't i wouldn't be in that kind well, of it's, predicament it's not because even you yourself said nobody deserves to be hit with the no, brick no, so if that so if that's a statement then whether she's whether she's running her mouth or not it doesn't matter but i guess it's also like because she shouldn't she, be hit with if, if she sees dude pick up a brick and she's still like oh what you gonna do hit me hit me hit me there's two things there's something that if someone could grab his arm and prevent him from hitting her um she could shut up and be and just be like yo this dude is holding a brick uh because i feel like at the point that someone picks up a brick they're they're usually going to do something with it like we've crossed the line of just like verbal threats i That's physically fair. have an object so th point. there's like so many like you need a board to write down all of the different scenarios but yes to your point on my point no one deserves to be hit with a brick i don't care again unless Unless you are defending your life, there's no reason why you should hit someone with a brick. Yeah. Like, um, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go. You you got it. Um. Yeah, I'm just conflicted. I'm I'm not taking. I don't know that there's there's sides to take with this. Um, I think uh, it's unfortunate that this young woman um, was assaulted had a brick thrown at her face. Now, whether, you know, there's another side to the story that we don't know about or not, we maybe will never know. We definitely don't know right now. Um, so apparently this dude is at large <laughs> with, with the brick because nobody knows who he is or I don't think he's been found yet. Um, but it is disappointing that due to her reputation or whatever, mm -hmm. that some men saw fit not to inter interject and uh stop her from being hit with a brick yeah and yeah. and then felt no no real shame and and you know hey at the end of the day everybody's left with a decision right you make a decision and i i though i may not agree with the choice i can respect somebody for standing on their their decision like mm -hmm. no i i didn't feel it was my place or it was justified for me to to get involved okay but one could also argue i'm just saying i'm just saying if i can speak for my brother Tariq, <laughs> won't be lumping this in with everybody okay fba <laughs> I'm, F, I'm fba dave from now on call me fba dave. i i guess my thing is at what this is just me i i know i always say the devil doesn't need an advocate but this is me devil's advocating um at what point did it become i want to make sure i say this right always edit it out. a man's responsibility to like protect women mm. again this is just me being devil's advocate because 
if you think of a scenario like you're just out you don't know you might not know I mean, out of the goodness of your heart, you'll defend. But you said but a woman me. could also come to another woman's defense. You said it so, like, if I like, it's just it's just complicated. It, it's very complicated. But the, it, it, because we've put this expectation, and I don't know if it comes from fairy tales and Prince Charming, and just you know, I'm here to protect you know your your honor, whatever. But I, I part of me thinks that it's this misconception. You are my husband. It is your responsibility to protect me. You got that run in your mouth. I mean, you know, <laughs> I got the kids to think about. <laughs> anyway, you as your husband, it's your responsibility to protect me. Um, but I don't know that just as I think it takes a good person, like a good if you see a woman if I am a woman and I'm out and I'm at a bar and I see a man slip something in a woman's drink, I'm going to step in. Maybe I'll say something to the bartender. Maybe I'll accidentally spill the drink. I will do something to try and like prevent, like help my fellow woman, sister, lady. Um, but I, I, I think that there's, and I feel like these are conversations that only happen in the black community. Like, I don't know that this, <laughs> yes you have instances where you know there are good guys I've, I've been in scenarios where guys have like stepped up and been like yo bro back up like she ain't she ain't interested she got but i've also had scenarios where my girlfriends have been like back up she ain't interested so i, I don't know that it necessarily has to be this pressure that we're putting on men that they have to you know you go out and I'm a man, so I need to protect every woman that's out there. Because I think that also creates like, I don't know if narcissism is a word, but I feel like that also creates this weird bravado. And and, and this is not me going down the feminist route. This is more so just me asking like, when did we get to the point that it's a man, like if you just go out with your boy to have a cigar and something pops off for a woman you don't know, like why are you, I guess my question is why are you obligated to step in? Is it because you're a man? Is it because you're a good person? Like, where does that obligation come from is what I'm curious about. Like, I feel like it's just a blanket for me. If something's going on, it's just a blanket human. But there are also scenarios that I've been around that I'm like, I'm not going to interject myself into this because I need to get home to people. Mm. And this, no offense, is not my problem. So I'm wondering if, you know, subtract her taunting and all of that at the core of it, why is it a cultural thing? Is it a societal thing that the expectation that the, this man was bothering her and, you know, she's upset because none of the men around her stepped in and came to protect her but is that also taking advantage of men like i am a woman i may or may not put myself into a situation and because men are around i expect them to fend for me so this is where i'm saying there's so much depth to it but again i will emphasize i'm not condoning this man's behavior um whether you know it is her story is accurate that she, he asked for her number and she said no and you know some women will lay into a man um and he and, and a lot of men are fragile a lot of men you know when you come for their their masculinity they're fragile and she might have said something that triggered him um that does not mean it's okay to hit her in the face with a brick but I don't want to even say but to make it seem like I'm nullifying what I previously said. It's just, it's it's very, very complicated. I don't know how I feel about the guy on the video talking about I would, I, and I would do it again. Uh, but not every man, not every man is a hero. Hmm. And I think there's a big misconception that because you are a man, you should be a hero. You should save a life. I don't know that I... But like, I feel like if I had a son and I was raising him and I, w I would tell him like, if something crazy is going off, don't like people say, it, don't be a hero, don't be a hero. And that person who goes to be a hero usually gets sucker punched in the face. Sometimes you don't have to be a hero. And unfortunately someone might become a victim because you weren't a hero, but that you not becoming because then it becomes you're in a fight for something that wasn't wasn't about you 
So I guess that's where where I'm I'm concerned. Um, but at the same time, it, it it it's just weird. Like I think about the scenario that happened to me in Jamaica, and so in short. I had gone to the bathroom. I was coming from the bathroom. Some man took it upon himself to touch me on on my body in a place that he had no right to. And I, I, I slapped him. That was just my instinct. Um, like, clear across the face. I have never slapped an individual in my entire life. Slapped him. And I remember... In all of my up and down emotions struggling I was like I you know I was like I was just coming from the bathroom I wasn't dancing I wasn't doing anything provocative I wasn't you know I was innocently walking from the bathroom to go and find my friends and then I had another moment where I was like even if I was doing all of these things that didn't warrant this man that I don't know to assault me like this so now I'm conflicted now I'm blaming myself and so you know you you and I I don't know if men have a lot of instances where they have to deal with that, but as women, you do. Like when something happens to you, you you take the blame because society teaches you to blame yourself. Oh, what was she wearing? How was she walking? What was she doing? And it's like, she could have been butt naked. That still does not give you the right to touch her without her permission. So as I'm saying all these things and I'm, I'm trying to do my best to not victim blame because I don't think again, anyone has the right to be hit with a brick. Um, just like I don't think no matter what you're doing, wearing, talking, dancing environment, you're in someone who doesn't know you has the right to touch your body. Um, it's still, there's still so many layers of thought that have to go into it. Mm -hmm. But I do think that someone and no one, we weren't there, but I feel like at least one person could have been like, yo, bro, it's not that serious. Yo, let it go. If she's, if she was a troublemaker, as they claim, um, just be like, yeah, you know, this is how she is. Let her, let her, let her be. Um, I hope they find this man. I hope they arrest this man. Um, I'm sure we will hear his side of the story and he will find a way to justify it. And people will support his defense on assault on hitting her in the face with a brick um i hope she's okay in the long run um but i know this is going to be long-term trauma for her but i think you know a lot of the reason why women really initially stood behind her and still do is because this isn't out of the ordinary for a man for men who for fragile men let me be very specific you know there are fragile men like i said who they are so entitled and have so minimal such minimal respect of a woman's opinion that the idea that a woman would not be interested in them is blasphemy so if you are going to reject me i'm going to make you regret it so you know that could have been part of this scenario too because you don't know what she said we weren't we weren't there so again maybe he asked for her number maybe he's asked for it before and she t told him no and he asked again and she was just like yo my dude i'm not interested in you and however words she chose to express it it just pushed him over the edge maybe he had been drinking there's so much to this um but like i said i don't want to keep keep going on i hope she's okay I hope they catch him. I hope this doesn't become a trend of men going around hitting women in the face with bricks. That's that's what I got. You sure? No, but I, I you know, people be complaining about the length of our episodes. I mean, at this point, we're at an hour. <laughs> we, the the dream of an hour long podcast. I think we've we've that was gone like season two. Yeah, I think that's it's gone. I never had that dream. I was cool. I did because I have to edit. I mean, teach me how to edit. Teach me how to edit. Teach no, me, you're not gonna be sitting. You're not gonna be sitting in my new spot. Edit. Teach me. Teach me how to edit. Um, I'm pretty sure I dug it this weekend at some point. Congratulations for doing a 20 year old dance. Um, well said. You just not the Doug. not the Dougie, but everything else you said before before that well said. Thanks. I know someone's gonna come for me. Come on. I uh, when it comes to um, women, 
speaking on uh, what it feels like to be assaulted and what the, the, the aftermath of an assault. Um, I've learned to just yield. Uh, the most I've, I've been assaulted is when you, <laughs> when you tap me on my, on my junk, when you're trying to see if I'm, <laughs> if I'm up or not. Like if Jessica will just randomly smack me on my. <laughs> Sometimes I can't tell if he's wearing underwear or not, and I'm like, and she'll just, you're a little, she'll there's just, a little too much motion. She'll just tap me. She'll so just like, I'll just like, it's not even tap. I'll just, I'll literally just flick like, him with my. And he's like, did you just? Yeah, because I'm, yeah, I'm like, yeah, you just, you just free balling. You just assaulted me. I did. Um, so you, other than that, do you want me? To, I'll stop doing that. No, other than that, do you want me? To as stop? long as you're cool with me slapping you. <laughs> <laughs> you cool with me slapping you back? Because apparently you get a mean right hook. As long as you cool with me getting the brick. <laughs> Too soon. Excuse me. Um, no, nah, I mean it's just it's it's important that we uh as men we just learn to listen. Did you hear about this cop in Maryland? The one who took a girl to the back seat? In the back seat. What happened in the back seat? I think we all know what happened in the back seat. Apparently, they've been getting it on for a minute. Oh. And his wife is aware of it. Yeah. But apparently, because his wife went on so Over tax dollars? Maryland. People in Maryland's tax dollars. I don't care. <laughs> it doesn't affect, my, doesn't affect my, my bottom line. But apparently, the wife went to social media and was like... Leave him alone? <laughs> nah, she was like... Yeah, it's my husband, and they've been doing this, and I'm aware of it, and blah, 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 blah. And she called out the mistress by name. Oh, she so was the, her name? So the mistress responded. Because apparently the mistress... This is this. Apparently the mistress's husband had left her. I got the... You know, matter of fact, let me pull up the... I got the joint right here. This is... Uh, I thought he was just arresting her and was like, yo, if you give me a blowjob, I'll let you go. This is deeper. Yeah. So... um the cop's name is um, Francesco Marlet, maybe Marlet. It's M A M A R L E T T. Um, okay, Francisco. And a woman named Paula Marlet, who says she's Francisco's Francesco's wife, have been going off on him on social media. She wrote, "Thank you, everyone. Yes, it's a very tough time for me and my kids. Plural, and as embarrassing and painful as this is." Please check in on us. We need the support, the love, um, most of all, respect from the community and our families. Yes, I know what's been going on. No, I'm not updating anyone on the situation after today. Virginia's hus Virginia is the mistress's name. Husband left her a long time ago because she cheated. So she and my husband decided to do this behind my back for years. I'm not seeking anyone else's input. I do not need anyone's opinion. My life is my life. I will make decisions according. I will make decisions according. I love you all except for you, Virginia. You can rot in hell. U B I T C H. Um, yes, it's wild. And then Virginia responded, um, saying that she that that uh that Paula been cheating on Francesco. <laughs> and there's multiple videos. Like apparently there was one like like this isn't this isn't like a one off. Like they've been doing this. Oh, this like, is messy. this is not this was not the first time, so he was uh, suspended. Does I'm, he I'm assuming. Don't said anything. Nah, he's been suspended with pay. Um, they gonna pay his? I, I'm pretty sure he's been suspended with pay. What? But he's it's being investigated. Who released the video? You know, it was crazy. It was like they were just doing it like in a neighborhood, like in an apartment complex parking lot. Like they weren't worried about somebody seeing them. It was very cavalier. Hmm. Yeah, but you know the video starts where he's hugging her, and you know you can see him kind of go down and grope the cup, the, cup the cheeks. Um, then he walks her to the back of the car. She gets in first. He gets in after, and that's it. So, um, I'm not mad at anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mad at everybody. I'm really, I'm really not. I'm mad at everybody. I'm mad at Francisco for being sloppy. Look, I'm mad at what's her name. Marquette? Um, Virginia? No, the wife. Paula. Paula. I'm mad at Paula for tolerating this. Mm. And, and and I'm also mad at Paula for potentially having her own little side thing. And then Virginia. 
What you doing? I'm not mad at nobody. Honestly, there's one person winning in this, and it's Francisco. So, look, inflation is like 200%. Interest rates, like seven. What does that have to do with anything? Got a recession coming, companies laying people off. People living, people not living check to check anymore. They say they live in direct deposit to direct deposit. Like, it's hard out here. Times get hard, make you do irrational things. Nobody likes, nobody respects the police. Virginia, Virginia, Virginia respects Francesco. So maybe he just wanted to go ahead and just immerse himself in that. I'm not mad at nobody, man. I'm not mad. I'm done. What's the harm in what he did? I got nothing. What's the harm? What's the harm in? What's the harm in? Paula, the children. I mean, yeah, but besides that, <laughs> you just asked what the harm. No, is. I mean like being on the job and doing and doing it. What if an emergency happens and they need him Jeez. and he's over there getting his rocks off? Back seat. He'll just go and he'll just finish up going to the front seat. It's the, the fact that he's going to take the time to finish up. <laughs> I didn't literally. I mean, he probably will have to finish, but um, no, this is this is wild. I'm not necessarily mad at anybody, but I just I don't know, I, clearly they didn't care because they were doing it in public, like where they could be recorded. Couldn't they have just gone to Virginia's house? A hotel. Like what happened to classy affairs? You know, I think we overestimate people's intelligence. Because you think about it, right? Like, mm-hmm. when uh, Carly Russell disappeared, everybody just believed that, that she had been kidnapped, that had been abducted. Because you think, you know, we, we wouldn't possibly fathom that somebody could make this, could try to fake their own disappearance. And then you you start actually following the case. And you just realize that she was dumb mm-hmm. I was like why would you do this because she's dumb I had a dumb moment at least excuse me I don't know Carly to say she's dumb she had a dumb moment mm-hmm. or a series of dumb moments mm-hmm. that led her to make dumb decisions mm-hmm. so I think we just overestimate how intelligent people are and that leads us to be confused as to why they didn't just go to Virginia's house just because you a cop doesn't necessarily mean you the brightest True. light bulb in the in the pack. So shame. Um, shade room obviously all over this one. I so, need to jump in there. I didn't know all. I didn't know it was that deep. Yeah, if you're if you're interested, they got the carousel where you can slide. Same for uh, oh girl, they got hit with the brick. So, um, we're going to close out. Mm-hmm. Not like this is church service or anything, but the <laughs> benediction. We're going we're gonna to wrap up. I just want to say, because I normally do this at the beginning of the episode, but we're going to do it at the end because we kind of jump right in. Last week was another milestone for Rush Five. What? We had like 230 plus views. We were back in the al- algorithm. Two we week, were the algorithm. Two weeks. No, we, let's not get carried away. No? Okay, sorry. We, uh, two weeks straight. Where uh, we had 100 plus views. So, and these were like, this happened within days. Like the next day, we had 100 views. So again, you know, it's not a lot for like a lot of these bigger platforms, but it's the first time we've hit triple digits. Like within 48 hours of dropping, mm-hmm. dropping an episode. So um, we're up six subscribers, I think, in the last 28 days. So we, we had three, I think, last week. So we appreciate y'all for uh, for for subscribing. Um, anybody else who didn't subscribe, but because you watched at least a portion of it and YouTube recommends this video to you, we appreciate you for subscribing this time or at least liking the video or at least just coming back and viewing. Um, but yeah, it was really it was really good. I'm I'm proud of us. We haven't um we haven't done even a fraction of what I would like for us to accomplish with this, but we have done quite a bit we're at like 86 gradual 86 87 episodes um so it's nice good to see nice should to be see. proud but now I'm, I'm 
more. <laughs> so oh, you don't got a taste. Got to keep. We got to keep the good content rolling and keep keep pleasing. We touched the, on a lot this episode. Keep pleasing the algorithm. We have. I think I'm going to cut some of it out though. You cut out the Utah people. That's what I was. That's what I was thinking. So, um, yes, thank you to everybody who's watching, and of course, all of our uh, our OG legacy sub subscribers and, and vibe tribe. I mean, appreciate you all still rocking with us. I saw Cousin Chinieri was in the comments last week. So hey, girl. It's good to see. Um, but yeah, man, be sure to hit the like and uh, subscribe button so you know when we uh, drop new episodes, even though you know for this season it's every Friday. We're on Apple and Spotify, Google and TuneIn. So if you don't feel like watching us on YouTube, you can definitely check us out there. That's all I got. What you got? Bye. We out. See y'all next week. Peace. Yeah. Hey. Hey. I done came way too fucking. Stop me now. I done came way too fucking. Stop me now. I done came way too fucking. Stop me now. I done came way too fucking. Stop me now. Stop me now. Stop me now. Yeah. I done came way too fucking. Stop me now.